Hi, thank you for joining us. This is Dina at Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Well, we're at the Remnant Nation channel today with a new episode, but before I begin, I want to remind you of NewWinePouring.com with one W. That's the Dream Journal website. At the top of any one of the landing pages that you might come to will be a Contact Us button that all you have to do is click on it and it'll take you to a correspondence page where we would love to hear from you. If you have a dream that you'd like for us to interpret, we'll be glad to look at it. If we can coach you on any symbolism that we might understand or uh, actually give you an interpretation, we'll contact you and let you know. So at newwinepouring.com with one W, we have over 160 articles now. Thank you, Father. Let's go ahead and open in prayer before we begin this podcast. Thank you, Father. Mighty King, I give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit come and pour out your Spirit, Father. Come, Holy Spirit, and be poured out upon those that are listening right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, every concern, every worry, Father God, that they might have. You said be careful for nothing, be worried about nothing, but with supplications and prayers, let your requests be made known unto God with thanksgiving, and he will keep your heart and mind in peace. And so I thank you, Lord, that you desire to keep us in perfect peace. Even as our soul prospers, you desire for us to prosper. As we've prospered in this great salvation that you have provided for us, Lord, I thank you that you also desire for us to prosper in the natural and with health and wellness and peace of mind and joy, Lord. In fact, it says in the scripture, such as the kingdom of God is joy and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, righteous joy and peace in the Holy Ghost <laughs> and all of those things. Amen. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Father. Well, what I want to talk about today in this podcast is recognizing who is in us when we have Christ in us. Recognizing him for everything that he is and what he wants to manifest in the earth through us. Because we are the tabernacle of God. The Bible says the tabernacle of God is with men. Christ in us, the hope and glory. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and my Father are one. But he also said, abide in me and I will abide in you. If you abide in me, I abide in you. We abide in the Father. We're in the Father. He says, I am the vine and you are the branch. Without me, you can do nothing. But with me, you can bear much fruit. And so, when we are in Christ and he is in us, then we have him dwelling on the inside of us. The tabernacle of God is with men. And so, the person that we are, the vessel that we are, the creature that he's created us to be, was ordained to be in this world at the time that we're in it. And we live where we're supposed to live, you know, in what country we live in. We, when we are in Christ, we're exactly where he wants us to be. And so it's a strategic placement that God has placed us where we are at to have impact, to have influence. Um, to change the atmosphere around us. You say, well, how can we change the atmosphere that we're in? How can we change the world that we're around? You know, when you are in your house and uh, whoever's in charge in the home has control over certain controls in the home. And so the, the air control in the home is set at a certain degree it's specified at a certain degree that keeps the home comfortable and so whoever's in charge of the home is the one that regulates the atmosphere in the home right and so it is the same with us in the space that God has put us in where we live what our sphere of influence is that he has ordained for us to have that degree of influence whether it be little or whether it be much. And the thing is that whether it be little or whether it be much, we have a responsibility that we need to make sure 
that every day we are where we need to be when we need to be there in Christ Jesus by recognizing who we are in Him, the authority we have in Christ, the responsibility that we have in Him, and that we are manifesting His presence in this earth where we are at. We should be mindful of that because all of the talents and all of the abilities that we have were given to us by God. And it's up to us, it's our responsibility to make sure that we're doing everything that we can do in order to bring Him glory. Are we using all of our abilities? Are we using all of our talents for His glory? Are we allowing Christ to shine through us? You know, the scripture says we're not supposed to put a lamp underneath the table, but we're supposed to set that lamp on top of the table so that it can have maximum influence in the room so it can shine its brightest so that there would be a minimization of shadow and a maximum show of light in the room and so it's the same with us that we uh, are set in the place that we're set to be a uh, influence for those around us and God desires us to change the atmosphere Christ in us the hope and glory a lot of times we think about ourselves we think about our own influence or our own shortcomings or what is inadequate in our life or what we can't do we don't think about the things that we can do and the fact that Christ is in us the hope and the glory and the people that we encounter in the earth and the people that come to us are coming to us because they're seeking out the light we think they're seeking out us <laughs> but they're actually seeking out the light and the Lord arranges divine appointments and so how do we make sure that we have the maximum influence that God wants for us to have in our life that we do everything that he's called us to do and we're available to him. The only way that we can do that is by recognizing that he is giving us the keys to the kingdom. That with it, the keys, we open doors and we shut doors. We can bind what we, we can lose. What we see the Father do, we can do also. But we have to have the eyes of our heart opened. You know, that, that scripture that says, open the eyes of the of my heart that I might see you and uh, so we have to pray and ask the Lord to open up the eyes of our heart that our, our inner man would be aware of Christ in us the hope and the glory that inner man would be able to shine out and have an encounter with others in the world that's around us because the, the Bible says that the flesh the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so the spirit man is willing. He needs to rule because he is the one that is taught by the spirit. The natural man is hardwired into the flesh. And so he thinks um, in a, of a carnal nature. And he's moved by the carnal, carnal nature. That is why we need to make sure that we bring that carnal nature down into submission to God or we need to take the flesh or, or cause the flesh to be under uh, this is called self control it's one of the it's one of the nine fruits of the spirit that manifests that tells us that the spirit of God is in us and so the spirit of self control pushes down the flesh desire to rule the man and so how do we get this inner man to have dominance in our life so that we can walk out the kingdom of God successfully and so that we can accomplish everything that the Lord has for us and would desire for us to accomplish how do we do that like I said the scripture says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and so we have to crucify the flesh. The Bible says to crucify the flesh. Uh, to 
resist the enemy. To resist the enemy, it says resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh unto God. He will draw nigh unto you. And so it's resisting the desires of the flesh and the pull of this world upon the flesh and drawing nigh unto God, getting close to Him, spending time with Him in prayer, in fellowship. The Bible says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And that we can have joy in Him and in His presence. And so when we spend a lot of time in His presence, when we go into the throne room of God, it says that we can boldly enter into the throne room of God grace whereby we may obtain mercy in times of need and we can do that boldly because of the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus because we have that kind of righteousness because he's cleansed us from all unrighteousness when we have accepted what Jesus did on the cross for us the remission of sins he's washed away our sins it says if you're faithful to confess your sins that Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. God is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So not only does he deal with this sin, but he also cleanses the sediments of it from our lives. And it, that is done also by the washing of the water of the word. And Jesus said that if any man thirsts, they must come to him. Because when we come to him, we will thirst no more. He is the water of life. And he says, drink freely of this water. Because it's a cleansing water. It's a washing of the water of the word. Jesus was a word made flesh and dwelt among us. So when we're in his word and we're in the spirit and we're in prayer, we are strengthened, we're made strong, we're able to resist the enemy, the works of the flesh, and therefore we are ever shining brighter for the kingdom of God and resisting darkness. And it becomes such a, a, a uh, flexed muscle, so to speak. I mean, when we, do, when we work out, we get stronger and stronger and stronger. When we work out the inner man, we get stronger and stronger and stronger in the things of God and the Spirit. And it does not have to be a struggle. It does not have to always be a struggle. A lot of times people struggle in their walk with God. They struggle in spiritual things. It's a struggle to go and pray. It's like the flesh is constantly pulling on them. And you don't have to have that war all the time. You can win that war and be free to delight yourself in the Lord, find your joy in Him, find your satisfaction in Him, find all of your answers in Him. Then you will become a happier person. You'll become more of a whole person. You'll have greater peace. You'll begin to have revelation, knowledge, and understanding because the kingdom of God has come to you because you've received it. Thank you, Father. Amen. And amen. I want to pray for you right now. That is, those that are listening right now, I want to pray for you. In Jesus' name, God wants to do a mighty work in you. He wants to do a new thing in your life. He wants to open up the eyes of your heart that you might see him better and have more in-depth understanding in the things of God so that you can have greater peace, that you can have healing and ministry and deliverance in your life. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you give them revelation, knowledge, and understanding, and the Prince of Peace will come in and reside with them. Lord, I thank you, you desire to lead us. You said, acknowledge me in all your ways. I will guide and direct your path. And so, Lord, we acknowledge you. We ask you, Father, those that are listening right now, that you will begin to direct them in a way they've never known before in a deeper walk with you. Father, greater peace, more patience, greater desire for you, a greater desire for you, Father. Holy One, we just release that in the Spirit right now. Father God, the gift of 
the desire to pursue you deeper, Lord, that the hold of this world will be broken once and for all. For those that have struggled and struggled and struggled in their walk with you all these years, they're a new Christian maybe, they've been having the, a struggle this past year, and I just thank you that they're released right now, they're loosed right now to serve you with all their heart and their mind, their soul. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy mind, with all of thy strength. Hallelujah. So I just thank you, Lord, that all the chains be broken, every chain be broken right now. By the power of that name, Jesus, we command it. Every chain be broken, every hold right now, right now, every mental torment right now broken. We just command the peace of God to overtake them, Lord, and to bring them into a deeper walk with you. Thank you for it, Lord. Well, thank you for tuning in with us. And until we meet again, God bless. Welcome to Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. That's with one W, the prophetic ministry of Dina Barnes. Tune in as she shares what God has revealed to her through dreams and visions, both nationally and internationally. Remnant Nation Radio is a prophetic and poetic view of the sojourning bride of Christ in the world today.